Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to a new video. Today I'm gonna tell you some things that you can do to make your computer go smoother and make FL Studio go uh, better. If you already did these things or at the end of this tutorial, if you do these things and you still have some problems, um, you can check a video I did some weeks ago, I will link up here, and you can see how uh, you can listen to the track in the parts that uh, it completely, completely crashes. First of all, what you really need is a good computer, all right? Uh, it's obvious. You cannot produce with a really bad computer. If you have it, you can do some things, all right, to make it go better. But if you have the money, try to buy a good computer and it would save you a lot of time. The first thing you need to do is, if you have a laptop, charge the laptop, all right? Um, laptops are really smart and if there are no charging all the time, what they do is the power for the CPU power goes down. They don't go so hard because they need to save the 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 battery, all right? And they don't try to go that hard. The second thing you need to do is to go down here, right click, power options, all right? Uh, and make sure the uh, high performance is enabled. I have it in Spanish, all right? But this is high performance. If you click here and here and go to advanced settings, make sure that and in this section, the CPU minimum um, state is at 100%. All right, this is with the battery. I don't care because I always have it plugged. And the minimum is 100%, so it will go harder to make the things you want to do. The third thing is to buy a cooling pad. All right, some people say that this is not useful at all, but it is because um, la uh, the computers, all right, uh, uh, desktop to computer or a laptop. Are really smart and if they are overheating that what you're gonna do is reduce the CPU uh, power so they make sure that they can cool down because they don't want the temperature so high so if uh, you have a cooling pad what you're gonna do is uh, reduce a bit that overheating the temperature is going down a bit so the CPU can uh, keep uh, being on 100% so you're gonna have a better CPU performance and if you cannot buy these or something, you, what you can do is to put some um, boxes or, or whatever down your computer. So it's uh, there's a bit of space between the desk and the laptop, and if it's a laptop, all right. And you have some some space to let the computer breathe. Also, what you can do is not um, put the the computer really uh, near to a wall. So, because if the, the fans are uh, the background of the laptop, um, they cannot breathe if they are too close to the, to the wall. And make sure that um, your room is, is cool and the, that the laptop is in a good place so it doesn't warm up. The fourth thing you want to do is click Ctrl, uh, Shift and S, all right? And you open this. Go to this, uh, to this tab and here you have everything that your computer is, is running, all right? And first of all, what you wanna do is close all the things that you don't need. For example, now I don't need this, right click, uh, click on the second one, yes, and it's closed. And now what you wanna do is go to FL Studio, right click here on priority, all right, and set it to the max. This way the computer is gonna say, all right, what you really wanna do is to use FL Studio. So uh, the computer is gonna um, concentrate all his power, all right, on FL Studio. Now let's go inside FL Studio, and the first thing you wanna do is go to Audio Settings and Change. First of all, the audio device, all right, I use FL Studio ASIO. If you have a, a custom uh, driver because of your, of your audio interface, use it. And here on the buffer set length, you want to click and set it to the max. If you're gonna, for example, use some MIDI keyboards or or you're gonna record some voices, maybe you want to decrease this to to 156 or 512. This way, when you when you press uh, a key on the keyboard or when you talk to the mic, the the time that uh, happens when you press and it goes to FL Studio it will be shorter, so it is not like a delay, you know. Now. Um, here on the priority, say to highest and save overloads, it depends on what you want. All right, if you don't have this enabled, what's gonna happen is that if the CPU is at 100% and FL Studio is gonna try to um, help the CPU, all right, give all the power to the CPU, and maybe the, the, the screen is like freezed, 
So you know you're not gonna see um, things moving, but you're gonna hear it better. All right. I prefer to have it enabled. I prefer to see what where where the track is and what's happening. Now here in the CPU section, you want everything enabled. All right, because these two allows the the multi threading on the on the CPU. So it's gonna use all the cores. With the smart disable, you're gonna make sure that uh, plugins that you're not using are not enabled. And here with the line tick, uh, have it enabled, but it's not really help on the CPU. I think it just because some VSTs have some clicks. So with this enable, you're gonna reduce those clicks. And here on the resampling, what you wanna do is have it. Um, I have it on two. Sometimes I have it on six. It depends on if the track is really heavy or the project really heavy or whatever and you don't really need to go uh, up here or here right it's not gonna you're not gonna hear the difference so have it lower and you're gonna have a better cpu next step what you want to do is on the plugin to use on the vsts make sure clicking here clicking here on the processing section make sure that allow thread processing is enabled because it's gonna allow the, the CPU to use more than one core just to for this plugin, all right? So make sure all of them has is enabled. So the computer can use more CPU, more cores of the CPU on every VST. And the last thing you wanna do is to render things, all right? There's a moment on the, on the track that you have a lot of VSTs, a lot of plugins on the mixer, you have too much things and it starts crashing, all right? So what you want to do is export it. You can do uh, it, you can do it in two ways. The first one is, for example, selecting this part, file, export on wave, make sure it's on wave, and export it wherever you want. But a faster um, way is to go on the mixer, all right? If you have, for example, this on the mixer, and we have, I don't know, some plugins, for example, the whatever right um, what you can do is click here on this button here and what it's gonna do is uh, when you export all right in a way I'm gonna tell you now uh, FST is gonna check uh, what uh, mixer channels had this enabled all right and it's gonna export just the things that you have enabled what you what you wanna do is click here this recording and render to a file all right so if we play the start, it's super fast, and here we have the same, all right? This way you're gonna save a lot of CPU. And for example, if we have on the button one, the serum, on the button two, the silent, all right? If we only have enabled the serum and we export, as you can see, it's really fast. It's only gonna export the things you have selected, right? Uh, it doesn't care about about this pattern here because there's not um, anything on this pattern that goes on this mixer channel. So just that, guys, really simple things you can do to make sure that the CPU goes as hard as it can, um, to make sure that the, the your computer uh, concentrates all its power on FL Studio and that your FL Studio doesn't crash um, when you play just two, three things. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. If this video helped you, leave a like. If you know other things that you can do to to make to make FL Studio go better, uh, just leave it in the comments so everybody can read it and we all help each other. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and see you in the next video.